I'd like to call our meeting to order. If you'll stand and, uh, well, let's do the roll call first, if you would. Here. Ellinger. Here. Ritter. Here. Horn. Here. Carlson. Here. Damrell. Here. Sassler. Here. Donahue. Here. Hammond. Here. Heidemann. Here. Herman. Present. Cox. Here. Bassard. Here. Madison. Here. Peel. Here. Van Atten. Uh, he is excused. Vanderweel. Excused. Very good. Thank you. Uh, and will you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> we have minutes to approve from the August 23rd, 2013, and June 25th, 2014, Committee of the Whole uh, meetings. And if I could have a motion to that effect. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Very good. Um, do we have a public forum speaker or speakers tonight? No. All right. Um, we're going to move right into um, item uh, 2.1, which is a, a discussion of our 2015 uh, budget appropriations and tax levy. Here's how we're going to do it. Um, uh, Alderman Amodio, I mean uh, Hammond, and Mr. Amodio, <laughs> what a tremendous you demotion. <laughs> <That upgrade>. <laughs> <laughs> you like the pay package. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's nightmare, but I'm not going to say whose. Uh, <laughs> all right, Alderman Hammond and James Amodio are going to do a short presentation uh, uh, regarding our budget, um, which I think will be a good uh, source, a good way for us to focus our discussion. Um, after they finish, there'll be time for questions. And then after true questions, uh, we will move into uh, discussion. Unlike common council meetings, where older people are asked to speak only twice on a, a particular issue, we are uh, in the mode of unlimited discussion. Uh, may I remind you, though, of that old saying that brevity is the soul of wit? And so let that uh, guide our discussion. So with that, Don? Thank you. I'm going to ask uh, Nancy and Jim to join us. budget sometimes gets wrangled in many, many iterations and many, many, uh, um, <clears throat> so what I wanted to do is review where we kind of started, um, talk about kind of where we're at. Um, I want to keep us a little bit focused on the bigger picture, um, meaning looking ahead at microphone. Up, get on the mic, please. Oh, hit the podium. Thank you. Um, meaning, I don't do as well standing still, so. Um, meaning taking a look at what some of the future challenges we have are and also some of the um, you know, future considerations, future opportunities that, that might come along. So just in a form of review, um, as you know, we put together a budget. We asked department heads um, to what we call zero increase, but as you know, uh, we did increase salaries and fringe by about 2%. Um, since the garbage fee at this point is set to sunset, December 31st of 2014, um, the guidance that we provided was there was no garbage fee at that point um, in, the, in, the, uh, in the budget process. Department had submitted their budgets to uh, uh, Jim Amodio. Uh, Jim and Nancy, along with the department heads, vetted those budgets um, and went back and forth with reiterations. And ultimately, the budget that was submitted to council um, had a million eighty-eight deficit. So that's kind of where we started. Next slide. The budget was then re, uh, submitted to each of the restanding committees and that, that review happened in August. Um, the full budget was referred to council and the deficit after committee's review was $1,047,000. Uh, the only change that was made to the budget um, was from PPNS and that was to add a couple extra employees. All the other committees came back approving their budgets as, as is. Goes to finance, comes back, the finance to finance committee um, did three things to balance the budget. First, extended the garbage fee for through 2018. 
um, for a total of 869. Reduction by adopting the changes that the Salaries and Grievances Committee made to our uh, primarily health insurance plan, another 206,000, and adding a part-time clerical person in building inspection, um, which added 15,000, that brings us to the 10, or million 47. So again, I just wanted to give a little bit of history of how we got to where we're at now. Um, next slide. So this is the budget revenue by um, general category. So you see taxes, uh, 15 proposed, 14, uh, our 14 budget, and what the variance is between the two. Um, and again, we'll email this out if anybody uh, wants it. I think, Mary, we can get this out to the council. Thank you. Um, so you can see taxes, um, intergovernmental revenue are payments that are received from the state, um, whether it's shared revenue, DOT, um, am I missing anything, Nancy? Expenditure restraints. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Would you say, Jim? Recycling. And recycling fees. Charges for services are things that we charge for things like permits and um, various fees for, fee for services that the city charges. Fines and forfeitures are self-explanatory. In, uh, interest on our investment portfolio. Keep in mind we're constrained by our investment policy statement to pretty much being in anything that's governmentally insured, which the interest rates on those right now are pretty atrocious. Um, miscellaneous and then other financing, those are transfers in for things like the ambulance um, and municipal court. So. Appropriations, um, again we did it by general categories, general government, um, public protection, public works, health and human services is essentially the cemetery, um, culture and recreation is our parks, uh, development, Chad, and, or Chad's office, <laughs> um, <laughs> bad debt expense, um, and then interfund transfers, um, which is a you know, minute piece of the budget. But So you can see, again, how they compare year over year um, in our uh, 2015 proposed budget. Any comments on that from either of you? No? Okay. So here's what I want to spend. I went through that fairly quickly because that should all be reviewed for everybody. I want to talk a little bit about some future challenges that we have because, again, we pass budgets in one-year cycles, but I'm hoping that we can look forward a couple years so that we can start planning out a little bit of a strategy um, as we budget going forward. So first is the Motor Vehicle Fund, and these are in no order um, other than it's how I thought of them. Um, so the Motor Vehicle Fund, um, there's about two to three years of balance remaining in the Motor Vehicle Fund. Um, once that's, the Motor Vehicle Fund is exhausted, but that will be about a $225,000 hit to the general fund which means, again, we have to come up with about 225000 additional dollars, plus probably about a million dollars extra capital um, when we bond for capital each year to pay for equipment um, that, we need to be, that either needs to be replaced or repaired. Jim, any comment on that? Okay. Special Assessments Fund. Um, this is the fund that we use to supplement debt payments. So <coughs> we have a debt. We receive funds for a debt levy from, from taxes, and that's not enough. So the shortfall comes from the Special Assessments Fund, and that fund will be about four to five years remaining in that particular fund. <coughs> um, as I mentioned, it's used to cover shortfall from the tax levy for debt. F fiscal year 14, our debt right now is about 30 million. Now keep in mind, where did we start in 2010 when you and I came on board? Combined with uh, <coughs> SIG debt, 64 million. We're about 64, we're down to about 30. To be optimal, in other words, for our levy that we take in, to be equal to our payments, we need to be at about 24 million by 2018. So we've got a little ways to go to reduce that debt levy down to where it should be. Otherwise, we have to raise taxes to make up the rest of that debt levy, which, again, if it was 2015, would be about 446,000. So 225 from motor vehicle, 446 from special assessments. Jim? Right. We got about six to $700,000 exposure, probably. <coughs> Do you want to get to a microphone, Jim? We probably have $700,000 worth of exposure in 17, primarily uh, in 18, uh, with those two uh, going away, the Motor Vehicle Fund and Special Assessments. Questions on any of those? Yeah. Can you explain mm -hmm. the Special Assessment? We're, we're still doing Special Assessment. It's a Special Assessment for, like, the Eisner Avenue project, correct? Mm -hmm. That's what it is? Well, not just Eisner. But right, but that, that's, we're continuing to special assess for projects. Correct. Yet it's going away? It, yes, it's not, because what we're I mean, because 
you've got 10 to 15 years, to, it's like 10 years to pay for people if they want to extend that payment. And I mean, so that would be coming in, and I'm assuming we have other special assessments that are on a similar time frame that we would still be getting revenue coming in. We have roughly, <clears throat> excuse me, a million and a half dollars in that fund today. And what's outstanding for all of the assessments we issued that would be paid over time, time, excuse me, uh, is about 500,000. So if we don't do any more special assessments today, we got roughly $2 million in the fund. And we're burning off about $450,000 a year to make up the difference in, to the debt levy okay. to pay for that. Now, if we go forward and do more special assessments, we still have to borrow the money. So you can see that, you know, our debt levy will support roughly $24 million. Uh, we're currently running about $30 million just on go debt, not including uh, TID, because hopefully the TID pays for itself uh, through the tax base. So <clears throat> that's the challenge. Once that runs out and we still have over $24 million in debt, it says that we have to go out and look at alternative ways to raise revenue or increase taxes to pay for that debt service. If that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you. And if I could just insert, um, we're not being, uh, uh, we're not live on TV, but uh, the uh, meeting is being recorded. So if you would put, uh, use microphones, that would be great. I never thought my voice would be loud enough to back up that way. All right, uh, to Jim's point right now, we're projecting, or they're projecting by the end of 20, uh, 12.31 of 17, we're going to be at about 27.9. And in today's dollars, just for an example, $3 million is worth about $380,000 a year, 10-year loan at 3% interest rate. And when you're looking out to the, you know, 3% is probably good today, but going out two or three years may not hold. But that's the kind of exposure. So it says in 2018, we'll still have a $400,000 issue. Other questions? Thank you. Uh, you mentioned looking forward. Uh, what happened in 12, 13, and 14 that we're in this predicament we are right now that we can't get rid of the garbage, supposedly we can't get rid of the garbage fee? You know, we, if we would have had a little pain in 12, 13, and 14, maybe to the tune of about $290,000, we wouldn't be faced with this question of whether we're going to continue it or not. And Alderman Bourne, I think it's excellent discussion point, but right now we're just focusing on the slideshow and any questions that, informational type questions. So why don't you hold that for discussion because that, that's a, a good place to start. All right, we'll go to the next slide. Future challenges, again, uh, we all know, very good thing that's gonna happen in 2016, 2017-ish, um, this combined dispatch, certainly well needed and, and was a hard fought effort, but there's a two and a half million dollar nut that we have to crack with combined dispatch coming up. Um, and currently we bond for about two million dollars a year for capital. So if we had to bond for that, that would mean no capital in whichever one of those two years, the county's not quite sure where they're at, whether it be 16 or 17, but depending on whichever one of those years it is, um, there may, may not be dollars available for capital improvements, at least from bonding, and we'd have to find another resource for that. Violation of expenditure restraints, we have to keep in mind, I always like to keep this front and center with everybody because the thought of just kind of willy-nilly raising taxes is not possible. We have this concept called expenditure restraints. If we raise our expenditure or our spending um, to a level uh, higher than we're allowed to, we could lose $720,000 of revenue by doing that. And what's the percentage this year, or roughly? 1.9%. Yeah, 1.9% for 2014 a year. Um, you know, it's not one of these situations where we can just say we're going to solve all of this by raising taxes um, as much as possible. City hall renovations, of course, need to you know, um, uh, start to come to front of mind. Um, there are some issues with this building. Um, as, you, as you know, we've moved people around. We've done some remodeling. Um, it's fairly inefficient from a workflow standpoint. Don's editorial opinion, of course, maybe not staff's, but mine. Um, and there's some structural issues now starting to creep up. Um, with the building, so I think the last uh, estimate we had was somewhere around the four to five million dollar range to bring this building up to <coughs> where it would need to be. Um, so I think we need to look at you know what are some of the <coughs> alternatives that could be um, 
for this building and for City Hall in general. Of course, you all know that we're right in the middle of contract negotiations with our, our friends from the police unions. Um, and next year we go into contract negotiations with our friends from the fire unions. Um, and again, until that ferrets itself out, um, not sure where, where we're gonna be with that. Um, questions on any of those? You know, I don't wanna paint a doom and gloom, but I wanna paint a picture that um, you know, we have some issues, so we wanna think carefully um, when we're making budget decisions this year um, because More future challenges, escalation. 2016, we estimated about 536,000. That's salaries, benefits, and a presidential election, um, which usually costs us about a buck 50. Um, and 2017, again, we just used about a 2% wage, wage and fringe escalation. That's about 430,000. Um, so you can see kind of the numbers start to add up pretty close, pretty quickly. As I mentioned just a second ago, one of the limitations we have is with Act 10, which did not exist when we did the garbage fee. Act 10, um, it came in afterwards, of course, and what Act 10 says is that if you had a fee in place, it's currently grandfathered. If you get rid of a fee and want to bring it back other than a wheel tax, then you have to reduce your levy by the uh, equivalent amount, and again, um, it doesn't do us any good. We can raise taxes by net new construction or CPI, and I think what do we get? Uh, 1.4. So we're not one and a half is this year. No. Did you have a question? Yes, I did. Uh, what does what does this have to do with Act 10? That was bargaining issues. That didn't have anything to do with the budget. Uh, I think the current fee grandfathered uh, is that was a budget decision. That wasn't an Act 10 decision. That was a separate decision. Act 10 was strictly uh, bargaining rights, that's all it had to do with. Oh, go ahead, Jim. It might have been in Act 32, but Act 32 corrected some of the Act 10 things to plug some holes in the budgets where municipalities were starting to put in fees to raise revenue because they couldn't raise their expenses. So they put a limitation in 13 that says whatever fees are in place stay. If you put new fees in place, dollar for dollar it would come off your levy. I understand that, but I didn't think it had anything to do with Act 10. That was a whole different issue. No, it did. All right. So some future considerations, because it's not all doom and gloom. Uh, let me get to the right slide here. There we go. Future considerations. Obviously, you can't drive down South Taylor Drive without seeing two massive cranes down there. Um, so at some point, those buildings will come on the tax rolls. Um, along with some other things that are, are coming. However, we're not sure when and where those are going to come into place. Um, so we're gonna have some you know, increase in tax revenue due to some new construction. We estimate that'll probably be here in 2017. Um, as a side note, because of expenditure restraints, that may be a good opportunity <coughs> to roll the motor vehicle fund into the general fund um, so that we don't violate the expenditure restraints since we'll have an increase in revenue. Um, so somebody keep that tucked in the back of their minds. Um, of course, combined dispatch, um, you know, in 2012, 2013, or 2011 and 2012, 12 and 13, we've had some surpluses. Uh, 12s were highly due to some of the things we were able to do because of Act 10. Um, but again, we may be able to fund all of a portion of that um, from our reserve balances so we don't have to bond for it. Um, and again, coincidentally, um, we can use that bonded money for cap <coughs> CapEx. Um, one of the things, this is a side note to this, one of the things we can hope and pray for from a city standpoint is that, uh, at least from our bond portfolios, that interest rates would go up a little bit. So that would drive some additional revenue there. Of course, that would also create an increase in our bond portfolio that uh, our interest expense that we have to pay as well. Benefit package, um, you know, I'm gonna throw this out right away. Um, I think one of the things we need to be looking at is high deductible health plan in 2016 um, in order to keep some of our benefit costs down. So that should be on the radar screen. Um, increasing co-pays and deductibles. Again, we've been gradually doing that over the last several years. I think we need to continue to do that. Um, and then retiree benefits. Um, many of you are aware that the county um, made some modifications to their retiree benefits. And again, I'm not saying we should do that, but certainly something that needs to be taken a look at um, as every one of the employees in the back are ready to throw something at me. Um, but it should be something that's, uh, needs, that should be looked at. 
Um, so those are some of the future considerations um, for you guys for, to keep in mind as we go forward. So questions on that? Or in Thanks. Uh, any chance of doing the HSA for 15? I know we're going to have a presentation in another week or so, and I believe some of the employees, when they found out that they're going to be paying 15% on this health plan that we have now, actually asked for an HSA. So is there still a possibility for 15? There is. I would submit that we probably wouldn't recognize significant savings unless we took the whole city to it. Um, so, but you're right, that will be a conversation in salaries and grievances um, coming up next week. Um, a lot of companies go to a two-tiered system. They'll have a traditional and an HSA option. Um, again, depending on how it's set up, um, many employees may not elect to go with the HSA. My opinion is it needs to be the only option um, for an HSA um, with an appropriate cost share um, affiliated with it. So. Other options, everybody always says, what do you got, Don? So here we go. Um, other options. If we we, right now we've got slated $800,000 for capital expenditures for 2015's budget. We could just say, nay, nay. We're gonna take that 800,000 and put it into um, the general fund. And again, make the mistake, I mean, take the option of funding operations through uh, debt, Freudian slip. Um, reduce personnel, um, be about 10 to 12 people, depending on where they come from. Um, that would have to uh, be let go. Uh, we could look at layoffs, furloughs in various departments, especially if, again, looking at uh, uh, have to prioritize people and determine who may be non-essential personnel and look at laying them off, um, particularly maybe in the winter months um, as we go forward. Increase the tax levy. Um, we've got about $500,000 of room to increase our tax levy. Um, Outsourcing of service, whether it's, I just used the example of parks, but you know, again, looking at uh, outsourcing of, of services um, and hopefully either being able to reduce headcount that way um, or um, at least being able to achieve some cost savings and put people other places. Wheel tax, um, Appleton just did this um, and put in a $20 wheel tax, if many of you recall that have been here a while. City of Sheboygan also had that. Um, however, it has to be in lieu of a special assessments um, fund, I believe, is what the rules are written as, um, which means, again, it would be able to help, but it wouldn't be the sole solution. And Appleton, in case you're wondering, put in a $20 wheel tax. City Hall consolidation, um, you know, by reconfiguring how we do things, whether it's in this building or other buildings, might be able to save, again, some headcount um, by just consolidating how we do things and also some, maybe some costs. Um, and then with all the new construction that's going on, there will certainly be some increase in, in permitting fees and inspection fees and those types of things from what's going on um, with our um, new construction in the city. But again, my thinking might be you want to, you may want to consider using that towards capital expenditures or to help pay for combined dispatch. So again, we don't have to borrow for that in 2016 or 2017. So. Those are just some other options. I'm sure there's others in people's minds um, as well. Um, but that's what uh, we looked at as, as other options if for whatever reason we would decide not to go with the garbage fee. So that's it. Again, just wanted to give a, an overview of where we were at um, with the budget. I'll answer any questions uh, <coughs> as it relates to the structure of it or um, where we're at. Way at the beginning, Don, you had a slide that showed three areas of, um, looked like an income line or revenue line. But one of them was a hiring of a part-time employee. I didn't understand that. We're losing a, one of our people in building inspection, our clerks, is re, one of the clerks is retiring. And replacing, but they were full-time replacing they were part -time. Right, right. full -time. Got it. Full-time. No, they were part-time replacing with part-time. So there wouldn't be a 15. Or well, they weren't included in the original budget we got. Okay. So they were added back in. We wouldn't replace them. Okay. The assumption was we weren't going <coughs> to. Other questions for Alderman Hammond? Would it be the appropriate time for me to ask my question that I asked before about uh, 
you know, a lot of this, a lot of this, well, first of all, why didn't we do anything in 12, 13, and 14? Again, it would have been about $290,000 a year. That would have been a lot less painless if we would have done it on a yearly basis. And now we're at faced with either continuing the garbage fee at $869,000 or coming up with one of the things you considered reviewing. So I guess my question is, why didn't we do something in 12, 13, and 14 as the people that voted for the garbage fee in the first place were promised? Uh, I remember having a discussion with you back before I voted on the garbage fee in the first place. Don't worry about it, Jim. Go ahead and vote for the garbage fee, and we'll make the spending cuts, and we'll wean us off of the garbage fee so we won't need it when we get to 2015. That's my question. Sure. Well, as typical, it's a little bit loaded, but we'll go with it. Um, first off, that wasn't the way the conversation went, but we'll, we'll let you have that one too. Um, that was all pre-Act 10. You know, one of the conversations, and again, was to try to get the garbage fee to the tax levy so that, again, it would be part of people's tax bills, and Act 10 prevented that from happening. So as far as cutting expenses, you know, we've done a pretty decent job of keeping expenses low. If you look at the tax levy when I came on in 2010, versus where it is now, it's lower. So I don't know that it's fair to say we should have lowered it by 290,000 um, and certainly didn't see any thoughts or suggestions or resolutions coming from that side of the desk, but. Um, well, I had, several, I had several suggestions. I pointed out over a year ago, the mess we're in with the employee health insurance. Mm -hmm. And up until the 11th hour a couple of weeks ago, we didn't even discuss it in salary and grievance, and I don't blame Madam Chairman for that. Uh, I, I blame leadership on your part and Mr. Amodio. Mm -hmm. I also recommended. Um, excuse me. No, just okay. as a no, no, just as a point of order. When I chair the meeting, it really we we need to keep civil a civil tone, and I know that emotions can run high on these sorts of things. But this this is a government body, and we will maintain <coughs> civility or I will adjourn the meeting. Well, I, I, okay. I don't think I'm being uncivil. I'm making Just take a deep breath, a Alderman Boren, and let's not be argumentative. We are here to discuss, and we're here to ask questions. And we can do that in a civil way. We can debate in a civil way, but let's not be accusatory. Uh, so uh, I have made suggestions over the last year. I also, I also uh, recommended taking a look at the fire department. Uh, first of all, taking a look at the financial viability of the ambulance service, and uh, that, it, just to put it bluntly, suggestions have not been welcome. In fact, I've been vilified over the last year for making suggestions. So don't say there weren't suggestions made. Do you have a question, this Alderman side, Born? Yeah. I to just, the question, I, please, instead that, of grandstanding. That's, I'm not grandstanding. Okay. I'm telling uh, you the way it was. Me. This is like talking to my children. I don't think you've heard me. All right. Everybody take a deep breath. Um, Alderman Hammond, why don't you come back up here because I think the questions, I think, does anybody else have any questions regarding the presentation? Alderman Carlson. It's more of a statement, really. Um, well, then, yes. I'm just looking for questions regarding the facts, regarding the material that was presented. All right. So, if you want to come join me, and you have the floor, Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Chair, Madam Chair. I, at this point, I, I would just wanted to say, at this point, we are where we're at right now. We just need to look forward at, at, as to what we're going to do. There's no point of talking backwards. So at this point, um, we, we have all the facts in front of us. We have uh, the possible options that Alderman Hammond have put in front of us. So at this point, we should just be, once again, talking forward. So that's just my general statement. Alderman Lassard. Would it be an appropriate time to make a suggestion regarding the budget at this Absolutely. Point? Excuse me, but I'm going to have to read it. And make sure you use your microphone. <coughs> okay. And this might be a bit lengthy, but so please bear with me. I'm hopeful that you've all had the opportunity to read the material that I provided to you. I'm also very pleased that Finance Committee approved the hiring of a part-time clerk for the Building Inspection Department. But I'm compelled, after research and listening to our constituents as well as department heads, to ask my fellow aldermans for your support. I would like to amend the budget to also include a part-time building inspector for the period of two years 
and upon review at the end of that period to decide if that position would still be needed. The report clearly states the need as does our own observances when driving in our city. The problem is funding. Therefore, I bring to you this body the following information. I'm giving you approximate figures, and if you would like to speak with Chad or Jim, I have asked them if they would speak with you regarding this. Last year at this time, we had approximately 1,209 inspections. This, is, <clears throat> this particular department brings about a million dollars to the table, of which we put about 457,000 into the general fund. Now, as I do not believe that this department should be considered a revenue generating source, I cannot ignore that this year to date, we have done approximately 594 inspections compared to last year's time frame. We are drastically behind our average totals, which would also reflect in our 2015 totals from this department. Ironically, last year, they wrote 189 citations were written during the time frame. And this year we've, we've written 590, we've had 594 inspections and written 213 citations. Clearly the problems are getting worse and bigger. The average citation is approximately $691. Keeping in mind the litigation discussion may take, may make it, the bottom line be about $240 per citation. It is my belief that with a part-time inspector, we'll have the ability to do building inspections concentrating on code enforcement. This will not only pay the part-time salary, but work on breaking the broken window effect in the city, which we currently suffer from, and the downward spirals that accompany it. In my research with the municipal court, the majority of these citations have been paid. In choosing not to approve this additional part-time worker, you will see in 2015, the amount of funds generated from that department will be depleted in regards to code enforcement. We have been blessed with new construction, which will, in the short term, will bring in funds, none of which can be designated as they are non-specific in short term. This is a position that will generate revenue, address the needs of the city, as well as pay for a part-time salary as there are no benefits. A grade eight inspector costs about $21 per hour, no benefits. So it's approximately $22,000 a year. When you add FICA to that, it'll be approximately $25,000 a year. I think we have to look as a council, uh, maintaining the budget is one thing, but we have to maintain our city. And I'm not the only one when driving around, you can see that we are suffering from some areas that need addressing. So I'm asking all of you to support me in this issue and hopefully that you could approve that we could have a part-time code enforcement officer to keep up with the problems that are spiraling because of the broken window effect. Thank you. Other comments, points? Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, like a number of people here, was voted in favor of the fee when, it, when the garbage fee came. Uh, obviously, it wasn't a garbage fee. It was a, a fix a hole in the budget fee, but we shoved it down the throats of the citizens of Sheboygan because we could give it a different name and it sounded better. Um, but at that time, and I remember the discussions with a number of aldermen, this, this is going to be going away. We're not going to have to continue feeing people because I also supported not having the wheel tax. I also uh, voted uh, to alleviate the stormwater fee, okay, because government likes to take in money, but basically um, once it gets it, it doesn't want to give any of that money back. So then in, in the years that we saw where we had the additional reserves um, and we decided, well, we're going to be good with that money because we can only spend it on IT, roads, or whatever, and we, again, and that was a good decision of those reserves, but maybe at the time, and, and I'm included, maybe I should have just said, hey, we should hold that money back and then uh, eliminate the fee. So quite honestly, I'm not going to support any budget that has that fee attached to it. I think we should have done our, uh, like uh, years ago, other communities might have done, increased the amount of uh, uh, the cost of the benefits to the employees as opposed to what the citizens, you know, so it, it kind of gave it an equal amount of what the citizens were paying. Uh, other communities, like the one I, uh, the, the, 
the thing that I read about Appleton doing something four <coughs> years ago with their higher deductibles. Why didn't we do that four years ago as opposed to talking about it in 2015? I have, I have no idea. Um, again, I wasn't on that committee. I didn't look at some of the benefits that we're giving, but 80, over 80% 80 of our budget is wages and benefits for, for our employees. So is this, is this additional fee that's going to be going, are we going to be changing the name of this fee? Or are we going to keep it at the garbage fee? Or is it going to, again, be just, I'm going to patch a whole fee? But I won't be supporting a budget that has that fee with it. Other comments? Alderman Kopp, I'm sorry. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, Don, as far as the, um, if there was a 1.5% on the tax levy for that half a million dollars, and 300000 would come out of the, um, the capital expenditures, how much is left of with 300000 taken out instead of the eight hundred? Left for what? For CapEx or for yes. on the deficit? Out of that fund, out of the capital expenditures? 500000 Right now we have about eight hundred. you mind? No. We have about $800,000 of uh, money that we've got earmarked for capital expenditures that the Capital Improvements Committee right now, as we speak, is putting together their you know, plan to spend. Well, there's $2 million total. Well, and then but some of that's already earmarked for state projects that were required to do engineering studies and various other things on it. So the, what we have is 800000 So that would reduce that amount if we took raised our levy, like we talked in finance, if you recall, and mentioned we, you know, raising our levy mm -hmm. to the half million, um, and then either reducing the garbage fee or figuring out a different way to make up the 360 or 370,000, certainly could do it from there, it would just be less that we have for capital improvements. Well, I, I, in finance, uh, that, I mean, it's a good option now. I didn't know that was an option at that time. Um, but there's still a half million dollars to play with in the event that we would take 300000 out of out of that fund. Just saying. And raise taxes? Yes, one and a half times, half a million dollars. That way everybody's... One and a half percent, not one and a half me. times. <laughs> 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 Let's just clarify that for those watching at home. This way everyone is on the same playing field. It's just the garbage fee is not towards the two families, the four families, you know, the ones with the water meters. It's geared towards everybody, so everyone is, is uh, I mean, that's the businesses, uh, the commercial property. Um, it's across the board. It's actually less money than the garbage fee. I mean, the people that are paying the garbage fee. So a half a million dollars, no garbage fee, half a million dollars on the tax levy and 300000 out of the um, capital improvements. Mr. Modio. My recommendation would not be to use capital money that we're going to incur debt on for operational costs. Number one, if we go out to the market, there's certain requirements that we have to use. Um, so if we ever listed, <laughs> oh, we're going to fund a budget deficit of $300,000 with capital expense, nobody would buy our debt because it's not safe. They don't have any assets to take. So I would not go out and borrow money and dis disclose that we're going to use it for operational issues. Um, I would seriously think that we wouldn't probably get the, the backup to buy the debt or to support the debt uh, through investors. But if they did, there'd probably be restrictions. And then where would you suggest the 300000 I mean, the question is, is we've had opportunities over the last three years to balance the budget and to balance <clears throat> the garbage fee. And we have not been able, as a group, to come up with a majority vote on how to handle it. So we all sit here today and say, okay, how do we do it now? And there's a lot of things we could have said, should have, could have, would have in the past, but that's water under the bridge. Today's the day we're supposed to talk about, okay, how do we want to approach this? Do we want to continue a fee? Do we want to continue part of a fee? Do we want to do some of the hard things up there with reducing services? Nobody likes that. It's not popular. It doesn't win votes. But those are the decisions that this council has to make. I can't sit here and tell you where to take the money from. 
If I could make the sole decision on policy issues, I would do that. But that's the call of 16 alderpersons. You collectively have to come up with the solution. Other comments? Are you sure? Any other questions, ideas, concerns? Alderman Boren? Thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, there was some recommendations up there that Mr. Amodio just talked about, reducing services, reducing people, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, is there going to be a time between now and October 20th for maybe strategic fiscal planning to meet and see if that committee sees on anything on, the, on, that, on that list as palatable and then refer back to this body? Do you chair that? I do. Um, well, first off, we've, you know, these are all things that, you know, have been vetted before. Um, I mean, I think as a body, uh, we need to look at, I don't, I mean, I don't have a problem with having a strategic fiscal planning meeting, um, but I think this is the body that needs to determine, you know, where the priorities are. If we're not going to go with the garbage fee, which, again, that's fine, you know, as uh, Alderman Koth's suggestion, which was mine in finance, um, raising the levy and then supplementing the other 350000 or so, 360000 um, But where do we cut it from? What is the priority of services that we have? Because if it's people, what is the priority of services? Because 350000 at roughly 60000 70000 a body is five to seven bodies. Now, strategic fiscal isn't going to make that decision of what is the priority the council is going to. Um, so, um, I mean, we certainly can. Um, I don't have a problem with calling a meeting. Um, but I think, you know, we've thought through those options up on the screen. I'm sure it's not an exhaustive list of options. Um, if somebody's got some, I'm happy to take a look at them and, and you know, vet them and we'll put some numbers to them and figure out if they, you know, bring it back to the body. But um, those are a, a lot of the decisions we have to make. I mean, unfortunately, um, whether we want to look at the past or not, I mean, every year over the last five or six years, we've had escalation in benefits. Um, and we've held the line when we've had three, four hundred thousand dollars of escalation in costs each year. And we've still come in relatively flat, whether it's levy or um, expenses. Um, so we have been saving. 290 plus thousand. In fact, it's been closer to 350, 400 thousand. In some cases, even more, um, because of what the department heads have been able to do um, with their budgets. So, my question to the body is: If we're going to eliminate the fee, where? Where does it come from? Does it come from capital expenditures? Because that's what happened in 07, 08, 09. They were taking money from capital improvements to fund operations, and our roads went down the tubes. And now everybody's talking, we need to get our roads fixed, our roads fixed, our roads fixed. And now we want to take the very money that we use to fix those roads and put them into operations. I'm not saying I wouldn't support that. I'm just saying that's the reality of it. This isn't going to be an easy decision, ladies and gentlemen. Um, whether it's staying with the garbage fee um, or shifting it somehow, um, something's going to have to give. You know, if we get rid of the ambulance or make adjustments to the fire department, that's 700,000 more of revenue we have to come up with. Um, if we want to raise health or uh, take it, um, raise benefit costs to the employees, that's somewhere to cover the whole garbage fee, or at least to cover, that's another seven to nine percentage points. I think it's what, every 3% is 300,000 or so? So another three to, you know, seven to 9% that our employees would have to bear on top of that when they really haven't gotten much in the form of raises over the last 10 years. Not saying it's good or bad, but that's the reality. So, you know, those are some of the suggestions. So yes, I'd be happy to have a strategic fiscal planning meeting but this body has to decide what the priorities are. Alderman Boren. The reason why I would like some of those vetted by, uh, by your committee, Don, is because I don't want to be uh, here on October 20th and have to decide on October 20th without at least getting some recommendations from somebody for three or four things for us to consider with numbers on them. 
Uh, I don't think the appropriate time to do it is on October 20th. Okay, I believe that's why we're here. I mean, that's the purpose of tonight's meeting, so that we can kick around ideas uh, regarding just to get a sense of the body as to where we, how we are approaching this, whether it's, it's essentially looking at that deficit and figuring out how it gets funded. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Chairman. And I appreciate the opportunity, but one of the things was furloughs and layoffs. I, don't, I can't calculate in my head what each department would have to do per employee or per department what they'd have to do to make, have that make, be an effect. I'd like to get that information. 88 hours. 88 hours? 88 hours. For every department? For every employee. For every employee. Well then, okay, now I have some information. And what's the, what, what's, what's the dollar figure there? That would be fairly close to the garbage fee. And if, okay, well, then I say, well, and we raise taxes, so then it would be, you would cut that to $300,000, then what it would be done? I'd have to calculate it out. I don't, I, see, that's what I mean. I, I can't calculate it out, but can't body, calculate it out myself tonight. Right. But, Joe, this body needs to provide some guidance. If that's what we want to do, then we can go back. I mean, this, I think people want it to be like Perkins. There's a smorgasbord of options, and we just start picking and choosing from them. We need to have a clear direction, because if we do furloughs, which is not a problem, or layoffs, however we want to do it, um, where? I know, but we've done, we've had four years to look at this, and, uh, and again, when we went into the adopting the fee of the first, I thought that's what was the, the general impression that I had. Those were the things that we were going to look at. And we were going to look at how we're going to be able to get rid of the garbage fee and not have a fee forever, because uh, uh, that's what we're going to name it uh, if we continue to readopt fees, because it looks like every cycle, so then we're going to adopt fee for four years. Why don't we just adopt a fee for one year? Why do we need, why do we need to have it for four years? Um, again, I, I'm just trying to stop the, 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 that mechanism. I want to be taxed. That's it. I don't want to be feed. So I'm willing to pay my property taxes. I'm willing to pay the, the, the additional the tax if it's 500 some thousand dollars. And then let's, let's work on the other 300,000. I agree with you 100%. The idea, as you recall, and for those that, you know, as, as you recall, was the reason the garbage fee was put in for four years, that would give us time to get it onto the tax levy um, and the fee would go away. And obviously Act 10 didn't allow us to do that. So by doing that, we'd have blown through our expenditure restraints and lost 720,000 worth of revenue. So I don't have a problem. In fact, again, we've talked about that in finance is this year going to the levy limit and next year going to the levy limit, and now all 860,000, 70,000 is on the tax levy. That certainly is an option, Joe, or Alderman Heidman, TV's Fine. on. TV's on. Um, that certainly is an option, and it was talked about. Um. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I, for one, would love to see it go on the tax levy. Um, sadly, we didn't do that out of finance, but we can do that going forward. Um, I, I think that would be more, uh, it would make sense because it does spread it across the board. That's one thing Julie and I can agree on, absolutely. Um, <laughs> in terms of the $300,000, um, actually let me backtrack for a second. We keep talking about what should have happened in the last four years and quite frankly it should just stop. Um, there have been ideas proposed, yes, by um, multiple other persons on this body. However, this body did not adopt them. The, the point of this meeting once again is to come up with some different ideas because the past ideas that have been presented have not been palatable to the 16 member body. So obviously those, table, uh, those ideas are off the table unless we have a drastic change of the council and that hasn't happened yet. So if this body can agree on rolling over the, the max that we can under the tax levy, so four or $500,000, finding the rest of the money, so $300,000, $350,000. Personally, I don't think um, eliminating positions is a good idea in this city. We are already running at the bare minimum. Um, we are struggling or in certain departments, such as our roads, um, road construction in terms of uh, bodies and uh, money for um, construction materials. We're, we're already struggling. We're running at the bare minimum. 
Personally, I don't think we can cut anything from the police department. Um, our police department has been doing a fantastic job. Last year we saw a 13% decrease, Chief, in part one crimes. Um, and this is due to the work of um, our officers on the ground, uh, his supervisors, our police chief. They've been doing great things, and I, I don't think that we can cut anything for, from the police department. Fire department, absolutely, we can get rid of the ambulance service. However, that, that does not e equate to eliminating positions. We are already running at the bare minimum in terms of NFPA standards, uh, which is 22 bodies per shift, and between uh, vacation, leave, sick, all that good stuff, we are running at about 15 to 16, right, Chief? Correct. And that is the minimum standard that we have, cho we, we have chosen NFPA as a standard that we want to meet. We can change that standard, but however, once again, we're going to need nine people on this council to do that, and it's not the will of the council. So where else are we going to cut from? We've got the library. Actually, when I first came out of this council, I proposed a $100,000 cut to the library. That was not palatable to this council. That is a sacred cow. And unless somebody wants to propose it again, we're not going to go after the library. So where are we going to find this money? We could go after public works, which we, I think we're all going to agree in this room, we cannot cut from public works. They've already, I don't even know how many people they've cut in the past 10 years. Dave? Over 30. So I don't think that's going to be an option. So once again, all these ideas that have been thrown out the past four years to, to get rid of the garbage fee, they didn't pass. So at this point, we don't have many options. We truly don't. So I, for one, I'm going to support rolling over the, the max we can out of the tax levy. And I think a good idea that we, a good idea, avenue that we should look at is furloughs. It doesn't truly affect all, an entire department at the same time. It's a good way to spread the pain out, and that's what I'm going to. That's what I'm going to support. Alderman Bellinger, did you have your hand up? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, no one's thrilled with the position that we're in right now and the decisions that we have to make moving forward. But uh, we we do have this issue with the garbage fee, and during the finance committee meeting, it was um, debated at, at, at great length and. Um, there were other options that, that were discussed too. Um, um, we looked at early retirements. We looked at privatizing the garbage again. We looked at, um, I had a conversation with uh, Mr. Modio regarding funding SCEDC at the tune of $100,000 and if we're getting our bang for our buck with, with that expenditure. Um, and, and we've looked at, at everything and frankly with um, the ramifications and the limitations that Act 10 put upon us, um, maintaining the garbage fee for a period of time uh, seemed to be the, the, the best way to go. The constituents of this city realize that the infrastructure is in, you know, saying it's in poor shape would, would probably be generous. Um, it needs to be addressed and ignoring it in the future, um, you know, they're not going to stand for it. And the citizens also are accustomed to a level of service and they want that service maintained. So what are we gonna do? We've got this, this garbage fee, and it was my idea at, um, was dis discussions with um, Mr. Modio at the Finance Committee to take the garbage fee, uh, extend it for a number of years, and start rolling it over into the tax levy. Um, and the reason we went with, the reason that I suggested four years was, I didn't want to roll it into the tax levy this year or in 2015 because it's going to be the first year that people are going to see their new tax bills with just being reassessed. I've got constituents um, that have had their properties, um, in their assessment go up well over $100,000 and they're not sure what that ramification is going to be on their tax bill. If we start you know, rolling over fees right away, um, into the tax levy, you know, that's going to be an additional hit for them. So it was my suggestion that we extend the garbage fee for a number of years and then it starting uh, in 16, starting to roll that over into the tax levy. And then it would sunset in 18 and it would be in the tax levy and, and we would be, you know, good to go from that point on. Also, um, at the same time, um, uh, Mr. Hammond mentioned that there's some opportunities for um, consolidating 
um, uh, this building, uh, reducing some positions, and there's some other opportunities um, out there in the future too uh, that, that he did mention, but they're all long-term um, situations or issues and they can't be addressed you know, immediately and affect the budget for 2015. So the, two, the four to $500,000 escalation that we have coming up every year needs to be addressed and some of those long-term things can do that and I'm not happy with the four to $500,000 escalation. It needs to be attacked and addressed, and I'm certainly willing to look at that. But in the short term, with the budget cycle that we're on, you know, I, I think that's the, the best way to approach it. Very good. Alderman Matichek. Um, with the garbage fee, can we modify it? Could you use your microphone? Uh, could we modify it to a uh, bag fee? That, um, I believe it's Two Rivers that has the you purchase of bags or you purchase tickets uh, from DPW uh, to have the garbage collected, the recycling is collected for free. Could we modify it to something like that or is it either keep it as is or just rid of um, Responding to that? Yes. Um, I don't believe we can and uh, defer to, Alder or to Alderman McLean. You got a promotion too. <laughs> Attorney McLean, um, that would be a substantial or material modification of the fee and we wouldn't be able to do it. Go ahead. Okay. And then the other question is, uh, what is the condition of the garbage trucks? Because last I heard, they're in pretty bad. They're new. They are new. Yep, just got new ones. Okay. So we're not switching over uh, anytime soon to the one-man truck. I I'll, uh, oh. <laughs> Dave, do you want to respond to that? The question is uh, uh, whether we are switching over to a one-person truck anytime soon. I would say not. Anything else? Okay. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Alderman Hammond, could you go over again uh, and explain uh, that question that Alderman Heidemann asked about uh, furloughs and what that means? And then as a follow-up to that, uh, what would be the possibility or would it be the same thing if we just reduce the work week from 40 down to 35 hours? Um, first off, with the furloughs, or the, the that was my very rough behind the napkin envelope math um, based off of uh, approximate headcount would be about 88 hours a year um, that they would have to be furloughed or laid off, if you will, um, to cover that. Um, as far as going from 40 to 35, didn't crunch the numbers on that. Jim? make up about 180 people. So you've got 145 people. And if you take 88 hours times 145 people times roughly $25 an hour, it's $330,000. That's what the cost would come to. You just have to look at the general fund and the people we could affect by it. So that would be 166 plus the hours. So it would be a substantial furlough for our employees. Four months. Four four months. months. I'm sorry, just so I understand. In other words, it would be four months yep. furlough for each employee? For non-reps. For non-reps? I'm sorry, you said 166 hours, I'm sorry. Right. That would be uh, a month. A month, yeah. A month, okay. Four weeks. All right, I just... 
And as far as going from 40 to 35, I didn't crunch the numbers on that. But it's roughly $25 an hour, so it would be you know, $250 you know, a week per employee, per non-rep employee, so 120 or so employees times $250 a week. I think Jim's got his handy dandy calculator back there. Do you want to say what it would be close to? What's the number, Jim? <laughs> clear, clear all. <laughs> and uh, just, just to put in context, uh, a furlough is a pay cut. Does it also cut the cost of benefits? It's, it's it unpaid. Not. It's basically unpaid leave. It's it's basically unpaid leave, so the employees wouldn't have any accumulation to WRS during that period of time. Um, they wouldn't get paid during that period of time. I mean, they'd essentially be taking, um, you know, 25 hours a week, or five hours a week, 20 hours a month less. So they would be taking a pay cut. Okay. Is it the pleasure of this body that those figures be um, calculated in more detail along with what the reduction in services would look like? In other words, would we go to garbage collection twice a month? Um, would we um, um, close the library one week every month? Uh, because we can talk about furloughs, but of course that is a reduction of services as well as a reduction of costs. Is it the pleasure of this body that we ask staff to do that? I have a no. I beg Alderman Kopp. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm wondering if I could get the breakdown. If we would do the um, one and a half times tax levy for that half a million dollars, and if we took the 360,000 as far as furloughs, and if the, I could get a breakdown of the days, you know what I'm saying? The specific mm -hmm. days or just how well, many instead hours? Of, instead of the hours, I mean, it's 88 hours for every employee, but not every employee would qualify. Is that my understanding? It's only 100, 325 employees? No, that's how many we have in the general fund. And why wouldn't it be the 300? Because they have contracts. I thought you said those were the non-reps. No, the 125 is non-reps. Okay. That that's, makes more sense. All right. Okay, well, instead of taking the entire 860000 if we took the 360000 it's what would that amount be? And just remember that this is a, as well as a reduction in cost, is a reduction in service just so everyone is, is clear on that. It's, I'm just looking at It's not furlough. magical thinking. It's <laughs> magical <laughs> thinking on the furlough. You can't have one without the other. Alderman Bourne. Thanks. Uh, I had, a, had a, a very good conversation the other day with uh, Chief Ram, uh, Ramos, and I understand that he has quite a few people retiring in the next, I don't know how many he's got. Do you have any for sure that you know going out January 1st, Chief? Oh, this, how about this yeah. outcome? Yeah. Three to five. At the end of this year, okay. Those those uh, those people that are retiring, incidentally, from speaking with Chief Ramos, are all firefighters. They are not paramedics, so that does not affect the ambulance service at all. But the gentlemen that are retiring, all in, are probably up around ninety thousand dollars. And then the replacements, if we replace them with new paramedics, which is fine. Those gentlemen are going to come in all in with a family plan of about seventy to seventy-two thousand dollars. That's a figure that I got from Nancy last year. So if if Chief has got five going out and we got a twenty dollars twenty thousand dollars savings per new person, that's a hundred thousand dollars right there. Uh, and if it's less, 
it's 60,000, and that would take care of 60 out of the 360. I guess my question is, was the 2015 fire department budget done on the basis of us having up to five guys retiring that are making 90 and hiring five that are gonna be making 70, or a savings of 20 per, per, 20 per employee? Mm -hmm. Um, Jim, why don't you just come up and stay up? We can bring a chair. <laughs> we can bring a chair for you. You're closer to the water fountain, so. Get an alderman chair. At the time we did the 2014 budget, we knew of potentially four people in the fire department. So we took those four names, pulled them out of the 15 budget, and put uh, new hires in for 2015. So that budget's got four people in it of the five. At the so time words, we did it, we only knew you've four. You've done what Alderman Bourne has suggested? Four of the five, because that's all we knew about. And you've reduced the reduced the salaries, the reduced the the budget then of the fire department by four times twenty. That would be eighty thousand. Well, I don't know if the numbers were ninety thousand with benefits or not, but well, that's whatever they were with benefits in replacing the new ones was a saving in that fund. And if you'd like to see the detail, we'd be happy to show you. Yeah, I'd, li I'd, like, I'd like to see it. I'm, I'm glad you did that, yeah. if that's the case, because we, we are going to be saving tw about 20000 per employee of the new ones, and maybe more if they don't have a family plan. Correct. <clears throat> well, I think this gives us a flavor. Uh, Dave, were you just exercising your fingers, or...? <laughs> If you, want, if you want to speak, please come up. I couldn't tell. <laughs> you know, it could be it could be the arthritis. You know, that you wasn't never know. That was a short joke either. <laughs> and I'm sure you're right. With the furloughs, it is going to be a reduction in service. It it comes down to productivity, and if we're taking you know roughly 80 employees in the public works department and saying we're going to furlough for four for two weeks. You know, they already have vacation. They already have PTO time accumulated. So you have to take those fi figures out as non-productive work days already. Then you're adding potentially another two to three or four weeks of non-productive time. It really affects the ability to get the work done in the community. So I just want to caution you in terms of when you're thinking of that, it really will affect services and the ability to get work done. That's all I had to say. Any questions for uh, Dave? Hang on. Any questions for Dave? Alderman Carlson. Not a question for Dave, but it okay. has to do Does with anybody, that. Wait, wait, wait. Anybody? <laughs> no. All right. Very good. Uh, Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I guess I should have clarified it a little bit more. Um, I didn't say it was ideal or perfect, and I understand that it would be a, a reduction in services, but it's not cutting an entire service out, and that's what I, I don't think we should do. And uh, maybe it would force departments to find some more efficiencies, and that's just my own opinion. The other comment to go off of what Dave said is the other batch of employees in the general fund are in this building, so it's going to force us to close windows and cut services in this building from collections that we're already doing because the majority of the employees are either in public works or general administration, which are in City Hall. So I just want to make that clear as well. Alderman Boren. Thank you. Uh, I don't totally agree with that, uh, Chad. I think uh, furloughs could be staggered. At the, uh, at the direction of the uh, department head. So I think windows could still stay open, but the, the, uh, the furloughs, if that's the way we decide to go, can, can, be, can be staggered to try to keep as many services going for as many hours as possible, but that would be at the discretion of the department head. And just, just again to say, just reduction furloughs equals reduction in services just to keep that in mind. Alderman Hammond? Um, to answer Alderperson Toth's question, again, this is behind the envelope math really quick. Um, based off of some assumption, it'd be about two hours a week to get your 360-ish thousand. You know, we can calculate that in more and more detail, but it'd be roughly about 2.2 .2 hours a week. So just something to you know, keep note of. Yes, Alderman Bitters. I, I'm not sure who this w question would 
go towards, but in terms of furloughs, um, are there any rules about how you furlough people? Is it one, uh, an entire work day, uh, four hour, you know, hey, you got Friday afternoon unpaid. I, are, are there any requirements of us? Um, th it would be the department head's discretion as to when those furloughs would happen um, based off of service. I don't know, Nance, Dave, Nancy, um, do we have, uh, do we have to pay unemployment on those furlough days? So that would be, you know, some of those unintended consequences there, like unemployment comp and those types of things. But um, no, it wouldn't have to be a whole day. Sure. That's what you're asking. Uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, it'd be a lot more disruptive to a lot of these services if, okay, we just dumped everybody for an entire day. I get that, but you know, half a day's worth wouldn't be nearly as disruptive. I'll just point out that the. Um, I think the library was the only city department um, that did require, because of budget cuts, um, they furloughed employees. In order to keep the library open, the decision was made to close. So five or six times a year, and, and the, ad, the library advertised it, you, you know, but the whole library was closed. So they were very happy, and the library's patrons were very happy when the furlough days stopped because those services are important. Other comments, questions? Alderman Lassard. I'm understanding all the issues here, but um, I'm, I'm gonna refer back to the people who call me every day and I talk to in the street. I don't think any of them, I know for a fact none of them wanna have any services cut. We didn't do what we were supposed to do prior to this year for the garbage fee, but we have four years ahead of us to correct that. We have one of the highest tax rates in the state. People who live in Brookfield and Elm Grove's taxes are less than ours. The people that I have spoken to are not having an issue with the garbage fee remaining. I am not a proponent to cut services or hours to employees that we've already, it seems to me that we're stretching them to the max as it is. Services, people pay taxes and our high taxes expect services, period. We just have to make a decision how we're gonna run this city and I'm not going to compromise the services of the people in my district or in this city. So I am going. I am going to be a proponent of extending the garbage fee. Thank you. And that is our next agenda topic. But Alderman Gassler. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. I just like to um, uh, express my agreement with uh, Alderman Lazard. Um, I think uh, the garbage fee is a fee. It's a temporary thing. Uh, raising the tax levy is a permanent thing. It doesn't go away. If we raise it one half, one half percent this year. It stays on there 20 years from now. Uh, the garbage fee will go away if we uh, get our house in order here, and I think uh, I'm definitely gonna support the garbage fee. Anything else regarding the budget? Alderman Bourne. Thanks. Uh, I would tend to support what uh, Alderman Koth is supporting, uh, as reluctant, reluctant as I am to raise taxes. Uh, I think that may be more palatable from talking to my constituents than re continuing the garbage fee. And I would also agree with uh, Alderman Carlson, I think of s some form of, uh, some form of uh, possibly reducing the hours to fill up that other $360,000. I don't think it would be a real hardship. As I said before, I think the department heads have the, have the, d the discretion of being able to keep the windows open cross-training people, I, 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 would, I would suppose a lot of our employees are cross-trained already, but in order to make up their, the difference, uh, there could be more cross-training so that when one employee is off, another one can fill in. Uh, so that would be the way I would be leaning on this. I will not support the garbage fee going forward, but 
as I just said, I would support the one and a half increase in the tax levy and coming up with some kind of a solution, as Alderman Carlson said. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, I have a hard time with furloughs um, for a lot of reasons, but um, and I, I understand it, it solves a whole, um, but it's very difficult to manage people for anybody, and I don't know how many people in this room have ever managed people, but I've got 47 employees. And if I had to try to work around those schedules and furloughing people, I'd rather see us take a, a stepped approach if the Alderman Koth's sol uh, solution of moving the tax levy up the half million, uh, 500,000, and then reducing the garbage fee until we can reduce or roll that eventually into the levy over the next couple of years. And that way we don't, we don't have to val or deal with any reduction in services, reductions in uh, furlough days, all, or, or excuse me, adding furlough days, any of those types of things. And it accomplishes, I think, getting where most of our constituents are. Um, I haven't really heard anything about the fact that there is a garbage fee. Um, it's more of that they don't want it to be on the water bill. Um, and not saying there's just not people out there that like the garbage fee, I'm not advocating it. But they'd rather see it on, if it's gonna be there on a tax levy for those that itemize taxes in their minds. So that would be where I'd be coming from um, with respect to uh, you know, solving this, this challenge. There's clearly no doubt we need the revenue, um, especially again, considering we can't raise taxes to a levy uh, or to a level high enough to deal with um, the inflow or the escalations um, that are there. Somebody made a comment earlier about uh, getting rid of, or somehow we got to reduce these um, year after year escalations, and it all comes down to headcount. Um, it's bodies um, because it's 85, I think it's almost 90% of our, our budget is salaries and benefits. So it comes down to people. Um, We've done a good job over the last four or five years being able to continue keeping the same services um, that we have um, while keeping the levy relatively flat um, and on an, adjusted abate, on an adjusted basis actually reducing. Because um, most of our department heads, when we've made these increases, or we've had these increases, they've absorbed them somewhere else in their budgets. Um, so it really just at this point comes down to bodies and how many go and again, that's a decision this body's got to make as to which services need to go to get rid of those bodies. So my thinking, again, going back full circle, would be to look at reducing the garbage fee um, to the net number after raising the tax levy accordingly. So I think Jim wants to say something. Final comment, Jim? Come on up. <coughs> I guess my disappointment is I think we laid out a few things here tonight that say in 2017 and 18 we've got another $700,000 problem because of funds that will dry up in addition to escalation that will happen in those years. And what's going to happen in the next month will be the same thing that happened three years ago. We dealt with the problem. We got three years to fix it. We'll get there, and the problems will be bigger in three years than they were three years ago. Because there's nobody that said here, what are we going to do for the foreseeable future? I think Don did a good job in laying it out and said we have issues. How are we going to deal with those? We're focused on a fee. We're probably lucky that we had a fee in before Act 32 came in to reduce fees or not allow them. We have that to our advantage to use to build up what I would call a rainy day fund to take care of the problems we have two and three years out, which says maybe it's that fee and a combination of raising taxes. You have to understand that this body has done a good job to be stewards of tax dollars and not raising them for the last five or six years. But under Act 10, it's actually hurt this city big time because we didn't have any levy capacity. So now we're suffering because of the levy capacity, as well as some other issues that, quite frankly, other municipalities have, to say that we've got some structural issues we have to fix. Those structural issues were there five years ago. They're just coming to an end now to say, here's the problem. <clears throat> so I, 
I ask you to look at, not down, but up, and say, what do we do to fix 17 and 18? You saw the slides. You know it's coming. Let's not make like it's not there. Let's put something in place today that helps us three and four years out, not just plug the hole. That's my only comment. All right. See no other uh, discussion. Uh, let uh, us, Alderman Lassard. I just have an outside the box question that I've thought about for a long time. Um, how much money would we save if we combined some departments, move our um, city hall to the library, and cut a lot of the library funds? Since we're going cutting services, let's just talk about it all. So, so you're asking what it, what we would save by sure, moving let's city hall to the some library? Departments. Let's move our city hall to the library. Where would you like to move the library? Um, we'll share. Well, no, but the children's room and the adult room. Where would you something move them? Something we'd have to work on, I okay. think. But Maybe I think something them in to here. look at. Can we can we take and move to the library, the the golden place? <laughs> Nobody wants to cut anything with the library ever because there's a parade of children that come in. No, I'm sorry. The, the library has taken substantial cuts in the last 10 years. And so has every other department. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Well, I just Fire and police question. budgets have, have, have increased. So just, a just for a just factual. Just throw it out there since it's on people's mind. What would we save? I am not a proponent of cutting any more staff. Why don't, why don't we take this at a, at a different level? Um, because obviously some decisions are going to have to be made about this building. Yes. Um, we'll and those conversations are ongoing. Um, you know, many people will make comments about, you know, why, you know, haven't we figured these things out in 30 minutes? You know, it's not a sitcom, obviously. Um, but these conversations are, you know, obviously very complex, as Mary Lynn just uh, eloquently demonstrated. There's emotions on all of those sides um, with those. But if we were to realistically combine or consolidate City Hall, whether it's renting a facility, building a facility, remodeling this facility, you know, realistically, you probably could reduce some headcount, um, primarily with administrative staff. Um, to what extent? I don't know, two, three bodies. Hopefully you can do it through retirements versus um, ver two, three bodies, maybe four. Ver hopefully you can do it via retirements versus letting them go. Um, you know, if we moved out of here and we could sell this building, obviously there would be some benefits there. Um, but again, you got to find a willing buyer that wants to take on this. The pro so it's a bigger issue than just saying when we're going to move out. But the quick answer, as far as operationally, um, we might be able four or five, three, four or five bodies. Alderman Lassard. With that all being said, that's something that could be looked into in the next three to four years. Well, we're hoping to look into it in the next several well, months. Soon, but I and and I don't want anyone to get me wrong. I don't want to close the library. It's just that it's always we have cut things so tightly with every area that I'm not a I'm not a fan of furloughs for people. I'm just not. So I I would like to see us look at the well. What are we going to do in four years to get rid of the garbage fee? Well. Those could be some of the things, relocating, combining departments, looking at those things to fix the problem moving forward. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is a question for uh, Mr. Beeble and Jim Modio in regards to uh, realistically how long would it take to um, possibly get some bids on outsourcing the, uh, the parks? I doubt it would be in time for 2014. However, um, could we get numbers for 2015 to help some long-range planning? Dave, do you um, have a response? Or Jim? Well, we, 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 we explored that uh, possibility probably about five years ago. Got some cost figures back. Um, and quite honestly, it wasn't cost effective. Um, we use 
in the summer months when we have grass growing and it's our peak season, we use you know, summer seasonal help. We'll hire college kids and a little bit over minimum wage and here you go. Take care of the cutting, the weeding, the, the mulching, garbage collection, cleaning bathrooms. So during our peak season, we supplement a lot of that work. Um, to, in order to go out, I mean, we, we looked at the grass cutting. We have the number of acres. We could go out for bids, but if I recall, I think we only had maybe two bidders that um, bid on, on that proposal. And again, when it was analysis about five years ago, it really wasn't cost effective. But it doesn't say, I mean, that it can't be done. I, if I may. Oh, absolutely. How much do you think that would change now? I mean, you said it was five years ago. I don't think it's gonna change very much because the nature of the work and the type of equipment, um, there's not a lot of, let's say, landscapers that have the large scale type of equipment necessary to do large acres of mowing as such as we do. Um, and again, we already are cost effective in the sense of the summer seasonal. Um, if we weren't doing that, we, you know, through the years, we eliminated through attrition a number of full-time staff in the parks. So it's at a bare minimum of full-time staff and instead of keeping that full-time staff year round for all the summer maintenance, we have this large influx of summer seasonal and now when college starts, they're on, gone and our full-time staff is, is back to where it needs to be. Thank you. I, I don't have a question, but I have a just follow up. And, and I, I had a feeling that would that was going to be the answer because we went through the same thing with uh, garbage uh, a couple of years ago. We we are fairly efficient within DPW. Um, that was listed in, uh, as an option. Um, sounds like it's really not an option. So really, our options are: are we going to take it to? I mean, so to say, take it to the employees in terms of either increasing health insurance, which we um, have already made some adjustments for next year. Are we going to um, not give them raises? Are we? Um, going to furlough them, once again, decreasing their pay, or are we going to take it to the citizens, the taxpayers? Those really, I mean, as I see it, are the two options on the forefront. So whether we raise uh, the tax levy, keep the fee in place, or we go after the employees, I mean, it, it's, it's not going to satisfy any one person. So doing a mixture, I, I think, is the best approach. I, I don't know how many more things we can look at the privatized because uh, we, we keep being told that we're doing it fairly efficiently, so what else are we really going to cut or what, what are we going to privatize? So that, that's what we need to look at. And um, I, don't, I don't disagree with Alderman Hammond uh, raising the, uh, the tax levy to the, the point, the max that we can, reducing the garbage fee, um, but that still doesn't truly address the issue. Um, I, I know we plan on making some more changes with, uh, uh, you mentioned HSAs going forward, and that's something we need to continue to look at, but I would, I personally would like to spread out, I guess, the pain between the, the citizens and uh, the employees of um, the city. Thanks. Alderman Boren. Thanks, Madam Chair. I'm going to revive something that came up back in 2008, and I think the only one in this room that was probably on the council at that time was probably Alderman Heidemann, in fact, uh, uh, as a way to as a way to cut the budget, all, uh, Mayor Perez uh, gave a directive to the fire chief at that time, Chief Lestusky, about uh, cutting his uh, cutting his budget. And one thing that Chief Lestusky came up with at that time was recommended was closing the downtown fire station. And uh, uh, I think that was one of the reasons why possibly we went into the ambulance business to bring in some more revenue. But I remember Alderman Heidemann and I uh, went up to talk to Chief Lestusky. In fact, he invited all of the aldermen up there, and I think most of us took advantage of it at the time. And he said that at the time, he showed us a map of the city and where all the fire stations were located. And he said, for budget reasons, if you want to close a fire station, it would make the most sense to close the downtown fire station because it's going to have the least effect on response times. Now, you know, I guess that's a, kind of a, a statement that I guess what is, what is minimum, the minimum effect on response times. But that's what he recommended. And uh, I talked, I think I talked to Mr. Amodio about this a couple of years ago, and seeing that we have 
four or five people in the fire department uh, retiring at the end of the year that are firefighters, not paramedics, so it's not gonna really directly affect the ability to perform the ambulance service. Uh, and, and let's say, just take four of those at about $90,000 a year all in. If we did not rehire anybody, uh, getting those four people off the books and not rehiring at $90,000 is $360,000, and I believe Mr. Amodio told me a year or two ago that if we'd have mothballed the fire station over here, utilities and all the other stuff that goes with it, with, with it that's another $75,000. So total, with those four employees and mothballing this building over here and possibly even selling that building, who knows, uh, that would give us around $435,000. So that closes the hole, the difference between what Alderman Koth is saying about raising the levy and filling up that other 300 and whatever thousand it was. So that's you know reviving something from back in 2008. And another thing, and I'm not even sure if, I'm sure Chief Ramos is probably aware of this, but there are structural concerns with that building over there where uh, I don't know if they've had anybody in to look at it to see how much it's gonna cost to fix it, but it's gonna be substantial. But I know there was a concern already a year or two ago of that floor falling into the basement over there with the heavy equipment that's stored in there. So this is another consideration. These are people that are leaving the city's employment, not replace them, close that fire station, save an additional 75,000 by mothballing it, and we filled, we filled that hole with $435,000. So just something to throw out there for other things to cons that, for the other things we're considering. Alderman Koth. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, in the event that we would raise the tax levy to a half million dollars and spread the pain, uh, in reference to Alderman, Alderman Carlson and uh, I'm also going to take the um, lowering the fee, the garbage fee. If we were to do that, we still have to call it the garbage fee. I'm thinking the garbage fee, if we do, oh, where am I coming from here? I, <laughs> I, I'm trying to um, not cut the services. You know, and if we would spread the pain and even do a furlough, even 1.1 hour a week is still $180,000. And um, that garbage fee would be lowered, but not, I, I just, is there a way that we have to call it a garbage fee? I mean, can we call it something else? Or is that written in stone that it's gotta be called a garbage fee? Can we just call it what it is? Sure. Um, for, first off, I mean, if you, and again, Attorney McLean can, pipe in here, I mean, if you materially change it, it, it's, it violates, correct? Yeah, I would say, uh, we're allowed to continue the fee we have, but if you can't create a new fee, and by changing it to some other uh, non-garbage fee, you're, in effect, doing away with one fee and creating a new fee that you couldn't do without raising the revenue. So for the benefit of those that weren't on the council this time, there's been a lot of comments going around of how it really wasn't a garbage fee, it was just a fee to plug a hole. Keep in mind, for those that were here, you know, let's put this back into context, we looked at outsourcing garbage. And at that point, had gotten a quote from uh, Violia Advanced Disposable, whatever they are now, that I believe it was $12.50. And we determined at that time, by adding the garbage, by adding a fee, for the collection of garbage. Now keep in mind, all of our garbage people are inside the general fund. So that money comes into the general fund. And by charging that additional fee, we could still keep garbage in-house and do it more effectively and efficiently than it could have been done in the outside. So it wasn't a fee just to plug a hole. There was a you know a method to the madness behind it. Um, and that was we could do it more efficient, efficiently, effectively, and cheaper even with that um, additional fee than it could if we told the taxpayers it's going to cost you $12.50 versus the roughly $10 and a quarter or whatever it was we were charging by adding that fee. So I just want to clear that up because, you know, it, it's great for political speech to be able to say it was to plug a hole, but it wasn't like it was just pulled out of thin air. Um, there was a method to that madness um, when, we, when we put it in. Um, 
And again, it was that decision. Do we outsource garbage and use that levy for something else? Or do we charge that fee um, and keep garbage um, collection inside the city of Sheboygan? So um, for whatever. Alderman Ballinger. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, we got a, a, a couple things. I'd like um, Alderman Hamm and, and um, Mr. Amodio to voice an opinion on uh, what they think of extending the garbage fee four years and rolling it starting um, after the first year, the subsequent three years, rolling it into the tax levy um, in, in doing that, what their opinion is of that, what they um, like or dislike ab about that. And um, the, the discussion that we're having of increasing the tax levy by the max, $500,000 that's thrown out, does anybody in this room have any idea what the mill rate is going to be? So somebody whose assessed value on their house is staying the same, what does that mean to that person? Somebody that's gone up 100000 what does that mean? Somebody that saw their property value decrease by 30000 what does that mean? Nobody knows what that number is. So to sit here and, and you know, to, to talk about increasing you know, tax without having any idea what the ramifications are, you know, you know, I, I think is you know, short-sighted and irresponsible. I think we, if we were going to do that, we would have to know what the exact ramifications are going to be. I, I, I think there's just too much uncertainty with the recent reevaluation of the properties that went on this year. So, um, you know, for that reason, I, you know, I'm, I'm against that. S certainly this upcoming year, you know, and mm -hmm. I guess I'd like to know what your opinions are of, you know, of, of doing what I suggested. Sure. Um, mine and, and Jim and Nancy, they can jump in. I don't know what their opinions are, but my opinion, and it's only because we have capacity, um, would be if we were going to do it that way to start this year. Um, Again, purely because we have capacity. We don't know what 2016 is going to look like. We have rough projections, um, but we don't know what 2016 is going to look like, 2017 is going to look like. So if we bake in every year 300000 of an automatic increase to a levy, what if, you know, again, we now have very little room to do anything else. So let's just assume this half million is the amount we can go every year. Who knows? It could be more, it could be less, depending on net new construction at CPI whatever the case may be. If 300,000 of that's gone, we're backed into a corner. At least this year, we know we have a half million dollars that we can work with um, in order to chop that off. Then next year, we could go take care of the rest of it or incrementally, if things happen that we aren't expecting, you know, go out the next, at 100,000 a year for three years or whatever the case may be. But here this year, we have capacity. But we don't know we don't know what the mill rate is. You're absolutely right. It's, we have no idea what the ramification is going to be. So the law of unintended consequences is huge mm -hmm. with that decision. All we know is that overall, the levy would go up by half a million. Now, what that meant to the individual at this point, we don't have that mill rate unless it came in recently, Nancy. So. Alderman Boren. When would we have the mill rate? We're going to have it by the 20th of uh, October. When do we? Probably not, because we have to get. Is well, that we, tied to manufacturing numbers too? Are we? Uh, are we? Well, we're talking about the, just the city's mill rate. I don't. I mean, it doesn't matter what the. Uh, we can't control what the county LTC and the school district is going to do, but the city's mill rate is the one I think you're concerned with, right? Correct. <coughs> Would it be better to wait until the first meeting in November to pass the budget rather than the last one in October then, so we have that number possibly? We have until the end of November, I believe, to Jim. pass a budget. State certified values, I think we can get it by the October meeting, just for the safety. Yeah, I mean, except all the work concern, that's all we're concerned, it's all we have any control over is the city mill rate, um, not the county or school district or. Right. Um, LTC at this point. Let's see how that develops. That one we're a little bit at the mercy of a different power on that one. A higher power. Well, once they have to certify the assessment. There being no further discussion, 
Alderman Seal. Um, I'm usually pretty quiet and stuff, but um, I've never really been a fan of the garbage fee. Um, but I, I came here with an open mind um, to see if I could hear different options or viable options. I'm not in favor of cutting any services. I don't believe in doing that. Um, but I don't know if I've really heard a better option, to be honest with you, without cutting services or furloughs or um, if it is increasing the tax fee, we still have more to work with. It just, I don't know if I've seen a better option. So that's all I wanted to state. Good, thank you. Now our next agenda topic is the garbage fee. So we chew down it a little bit. I don't want to move on if there's anyone who has a final, the last gasp. Okay. Um, let's move on to um, uh, item three for discussion and possible action regarding extension of the special charge for residential garbage and refuse disposal services provided by the city through December 31st, 2018. And you have on board docs that um, particular resolution. Um, and Alderman Hammond, do you want to, it is your resolution, would you like to speak to it first? Um, sure, I mean it was, um, put in and undermine as finance chair. Um, right. But, uh, but again, the uh, conversation that happened in um, finance was um, looking at the budget with the savings, many of the same conversations we just had um, with respect to um, how do we cut the, um, or the revenue on the revenue side. So um, I guess it's much of the same what we just talked about. We have covered quite a bit of the territory, but um, probably at this point a, um, a motion to approve the resolution for discussion purposes would make sense. Is there such a, a motion? I'd move to approve it. Okay. All right. So we have a motion on the floor and a second. Daryl? Daryl seconded. Do you yeah, have a, oh, a no. comment? Okay. If, uh, this was, if you recall, in a Council meeting, I think Alderman Bourne asked for a resolution to be put in, um, and so they put it under my name as the finance chair. Right. Um, as from Alderman Bourne's uh, request to put in something to extend the garbage fee. Now, this does appear to be sort of non organic as far as the budget process goes to single this out for a specific vote, although I, d I do think we. Obviously, because of sunset provisions, we need to um, um, we need to make an extension, or it does die. But I think, as the discussion that we had regarding the budget, it really is part and parcel of the of the whole budget discussion. But is, are, is there, are there other comments regarding the garbage fee at this point? Please note that this particular resolution provides for an extension through December 31st, 2018. Alderman Carlson. I think at this point, since uh, the our budget discussion up to this point was for discussion only, and we don't we, we weren't able to make any recommendations to the council, um, I think it's pertinent to pass. I mean, I, you can do as you will, but I will be voting in favor of this, so we have something to work with when this does come to council. Um, and, and with that being said, Madam Chair, I do have to. Um, I personally have to excuse myself, um, but I would like to take a vote on this. So, all right. Is there other discussion? Just um, for, again, more for the new, what this is, is what we would be doing is recommending approving it to the council. So this isn't necessarily the end of it. So I just want to make sure that people are aware that this isn't the final home for this. It will be at the council as well. All right, seeing no other hands, we will um, proceed to a vote. All in favor of the resolution. Um, actually, we should probably do a roll call on this, I think. Aye. No. Carlson. Aye. 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 Very good. Um, our next um, uh, business is to um, is a closed session. I would ask for 
So moved. <laughs> Very good. Um, and we will do that by voice vote. All in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye. Um, we will take, we'll come back at five to eight. That's, that's, that's